My name is Stuart Tustin. I am from New Zealand. I'm a plant physiologist and a horticultural scientist and I work for Plant and Food Research Institute in New Zealand. And my interests in my career are involved with, with orchard systems, uh, understanding and the basis of productivity of apple and pear and peach and cherry orchard systems. The video that's coming up is a recap of what we were talking about at the Hort Association meetings and with the, the key points about what might be possible in the future for increasing productivity of our apple orchards into territory that we would consider slightly crazy in terms of productivity potential. But what I hope to do in, in the recap of the presentation is explain a little bit again why theoretically we have got some great potential in the future for increasing productivity by 50, maybe even 100% over what we can currently do. The photograph we're looking at here is a modern intensive tall spindle system on dwarf rootstocks. Very highly productive in our experience uh, internationally and yet there are significant biological limits to the upper end of its productivity. We see a very healthy orchard and we see a very healthy uh, grass sward growing between the orchard rows. The orchard's organised in the way that it is uh, to, for practicalities of access of machinery and people and to get good sunlight to all parts of the tree. But it is in that organisation uh, and the requirements for that that means that an orchard system like this can't utilise all of the radiation energy that the environment provides over the season. If we look at this from a plant physiological point of view, we can see here um, data from all around the world that, that a colleague of mine, Alan Laxo, from Cornell University, first assembled in 1994, and we've added information over the years as we've collected it. And what it shows is a, a pretty clear response from when you increase the amount of light that the orchard system can intercept, we see on the left-hand side uh, the, the productivity of that orchard increases. So as light interception, as a proportion of the incoming radiation increases, so the yield of the orchard increases. And you'll see that this is a very uh, stable relationship as we move up to the region of 60 to 65 percent of light interception, which is that part of the graph before we get to the red circle. What we find when we try to intercept more sunlight above that 60% level, that the relationship begins to fall apart, that we lose that strong relationship with more light, more yield. And what that tells us is that this, the design of the orchard systems that we have relied on so far aren't able to practically and effectively continue to increase in their productivity uh, without uh, creating problems of shade or, or biological factors which then uh, make that yield increase for the extra light deception be achievable. So the conclusion kind of at, at the point that we're at is that the practical upper limits for light and deception for increasing productivity in orchards sits at somewhere around between 60 to 65 percent light and deception. However, if we think about this from a theoretical point of view, and here is some of the data which contributed to that previous graph that I was showing, and this is some data from New Zealand, we see that up to a level of light interception or the maximum light interception that we could find uh, in these systems was upwards of 60% of the radiation coming in from the environment. That productivity could be very high and around 110 tonnes per hectare. But the interesting thing here is theoretically if we extend those curves up to a theoretical 90% light interception it tells us that the productivity potential is up in the region of 170 tonnes per hectare. That's 170 bins per acre. So the big research questions for us are what do we have to do to the design of the orchard system to be able to increase the light interception up into those 
levels that, that we know can give us that productivity, which is the 85 to 90 percent light utilization, but we have to design the system in a way that we don't get a disruption to that response curve. And if I go back to the previous slide, the, within that red circle is where uh, is what I call a disruption to that relationship. What we've tried to achieve in the past has not actually worked and so we get this kind of mess of data all over the place which doesn't really explain uh, the relationship. So it tells us that we have to redesign the way in which we organize the tree canopy. So we've put a lot of thought into how this might be done and I'll scroll through my presentation a little bit and come up with some of the concepts that we are working on to be able to increase light interception and the reasons why we are looking at these differences. So this is, if you like, a, a tree prototype design that we want to try experimentally and practically to see if we can increase the light interception from 60 to somewhere in the order of 85 to 90 percent of the incoming radiation. The reason the tree is designed like this is for a number of factors. The biggest factor preventing us from intercepting more sunlight is that we have a lot of distance between the rows because of the design of our trees and our current orchard systems. So the fundamental issue is we have to bring the rows closer together so that we can get more leaf area over the ground to intercept the sunlight. If we're going to do that, we cannot have a bulky three-dimensional tree. We have to move to what we call two-dimensional or planar canopies. They are long and slim. And to do that, we have to go to this planar type of design. We have arrived at this particular design for a number of reasons. We want to be able to control the plant as much as possible in terms of reduced branching and also keeping the whole tree canopy in a low vigor status because we know that is important for both productivity and fruit quality. So we want to use a lot of the biology of the plant to do this. So for example, we have our fruiting stems vertically oriented because we want to use the property of plant development called apical dominance. That is the control of the development of the upward growing shoot by the apical bud at the top of that shoot, which controls the branching behavior and the vigor behavior of the shoot. And with strong apical dominance, we get suppression of lateral shoot development which is important in a planar canopy. We want to spread the leaf area sparsely up the, these tall vertical fruiting stems because we know if we distribute that leaf area in that dispersed manner, we can actually increase the amount of light intercepted by that shoot than if those leaves were clustered together in a shorter stem. We want minimal branching in terms of secondary and, and third order branching. And this is because in a planar two dimensional canopy, there isn't really room or space for typical branching that we're accustomed to. So minimal branching is part of the mechanism for reducing growth in, in association also with apical dominance control. And in that way, we can keep a low vigor vertical fruiting stem well irradiated with sunlight for fruit quality and also avoiding the shading factors that occur when you get a lot of uh, branching behavior in shoots um, like we're more accustomed to in, in uh, tall spindle type trees. So we put all of this together and we end up with a very slim planar canopy. And the reason that we have this slim planar canopy is because our future orchard design concept is that we want to plant these rows of trees much, much more closely together than what we currently do. And here's uh, stage one year, or just less than one year into the development of the first prototype of this kind of system. It may be difficult to read the numbers down in the lower left corner, but what we're doing here is growing tree units on dwarfing rootstocks, which will have these two-dimensional cordon structures with upright fruiting shoots and these are organized in rows which are only four to six feet wide. In other words, we're bringing the between row spacing into much, much closer 
spacings than we typically do in our current orchard systems. And it's because of this close row proximity, which we believe is a critical factor for increasing line to deception. So bringing those rows so close together, we have to have only a two-dimensional canopy. So that it's kind of like a chicken and egg argument. We want more light and deception. We have to bring the rows closer together to do that. But in doing that, we have to change the design of the tree so that we satisfy all of the physiological requirements of an orchard tree that we know are important for fruit quality, which is sunlight dispersed through the tree, as well as increasing the light interception, which is what drives productivity.